The boys washed up on the riverbank and were found and nursed by a she-wolf. You ever had wolf milk? Makes you strong. Hey, Chad here. And I'm uh, going to bring you another HoloLens video. Uh, this time I'm going to show some more of the app called HoloTour. Um, I was actually working on uh, something. I was going to actually show something else. And I actually deleted a bunch of my junk. So, yeah, kind of a bummer for me. But that's all right. Just happened about 10 minutes ago. So now I'm scrambling because I'm trying to get a video out, blog post out every Monday. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, do what I've been asked to do, and that is show Hollow Tour more. I'm going to do that because um, I only showed a couple minutes because I was recording on the device. And so it just got the, like the first two minutes, three minutes, and that was it. Hey, thanks to Cheetor 2009 I left a comment that said, Show Hollow Tour more. Okay. Show Hollow Tour more. Three words. I can do it. I can do it. That's four words. I was actually referring to show Hollow Tour more. It's being the three words. But yeah, I can do it. So, watch. So, where should I begin? Well, when it comes to Rome, you quickly realize that stunning relics of the past are everywhere. Believe it or not, we're standing above the site of an ancient Roman stadium. To your left is a cool poster. Have a look. Yeah, there it is. That's a photo of this piazza taken from above. Now, I'm going to draw the footprint of the ancient stadium over it. See how the piazza still follows the same shape of the racetrack? The layers of the Eternal City go deep. Let me show you just how deep. Watch this. Down there is where the Stadium of Domitian stood, 20 feet below us. At the peak of the Roman Empire, they hosted spectacular sporting events here. After Rome fell, the population plummeted from a million people to less than 20,000 during medieval times. Over the centuries, places like this got filled in with dirt and rubble. I've got to get rid of this hole before we lose a tourist. look around. I'll point out a few of the highlights. There's one of the many restaurants in the piazza. Those cobblestones are over 350 years old. something and I'll show you the next interesting topic here in the Piazza Navona. That golden guy is actually a street performer. The stone for that obelisk came from Egypt but it was carved right here in Rome for the Emperor Domitian. His name appears in the hieroglyphs that are etched into it. Welcome to the Piazza della Rotonda, right on the footsteps of the Pantheon, a 2,000-year-old Roman temple that's now a church. So, let's take a look at the main attraction of this square, the Pantheon. Commissioned by the Emperor Hadrian, it was built on top of earlier temples. The first version was made by Marcus Agrippa, a respected statesman and architect. Hadrian honored that Roman with an ancient version of a shout-out. The etching translates to, Marcus Agrippa, son of Lucius, made this building when consul for the third time. 
That's the classy way to say Agrippa was here. The temple's dome-like structure was chosen to invoke a feeling of the heavens. Hmm. It's kind of hard to visualize from out here, isn't it? There. Now you can see what I mean. Thousands of years later, this is still the largest unreinforced concrete dome in the world. A major architectural achievement back in the day. If you look up at the ceiling, you'll see a hole that was the only source of light in the entire structure. It's called the oculus, or eye, because it was supposed to be the window to the celestial world. around and I'll tell you more about the piazza. In the 1800s, the piazza was used as a bird market. Locals and travelers alike would come here to shop for an assortment of caged birds. One could find robins, parrots, owls, and other more rare species. That's the Pantheon Fountain. You'll find that this is a common theme in Rome. Big fountain with obelisk. This fountain has a fascinating history and people have been tinkering with it for hundreds of years. For instance, the statues were carved just a few centuries ago, but the big marble pool was brought here from Africa back in the 1400s. Look up at this obelisk. After the Romans conquered Egypt, they started their what's yours is mine policy and began collecting obelisks. This is why the city of Rome has more obelisks than all of Egypt. Our next stop on the tour is the hot air balloon. Welcome aboard World Explorer 2. It seems like people have been calling Rome the eternal city forever. Even the ancient Romans referred to it by that name. Although the great empire fell into ruin, the city endures, and Rome's past plays a dynamic part in our modern world, like the Colosseum over there. There. That's one of the world's most iconic landmarks. It still serves as the model for nearly every sports stadium in the world. We'll head down there in a bit, but first I want to point out some of the other amazing landmarks across the city. Have a look around. You're looking at the Palatine Hill. That's where Rome was founded. Legend says there were twin brothers named Romulus and Remus who were abandoned on the Tiber River. Look toward the river. The boys washed up on the riverbank and were found and nursed by a she-wolf. You ever had wolf milk? Makes you strong. Anyway, the boys grew up into brawling warriors and got into a huge fight. Romulus wanted to found a city on the Palatine Hill. But Remus wanted to start the city over there, on the Aventine Hill. So Romulus did what any wolf milk suckled warrior would have done and killed his brother, then named the city after himself. And that is why we're floating over a city called Rome, and not Remusville. See that grassy, oblong-shaped area over there? That's where an ancient racetrack called the Circus Maximus once stood. The stadium could fit 250,000 people in its stands. The sport was wildly popular and incredibly dangerous. The NASCAR of ancient Rome. Say, 
show me something, and I'll show you the next interesting topic from up here in World Explorer 2. There's still more to see here from World Explorer 2, but if you're ready, we'll head to the Colosseum. Here we are, the Colosseum. 70,000 people could sit in this place. That's more than Yankee Stadium. Most people know that they held bloody gladiator contests and animal fights here in the arena. When the gladiators fought, they wore intimidating armor and carried a variety of different weapons, kind of like these two over here. Look to your right and you'll see them. I sort of borrowed these statues from a museum so you could see what the gladiators looked like. Most gladiators were slaves. Some were cast off babies found in Rome's garbage dump and sold to the gladiator schools, while others were captured enemy warriors. Every so often, high-born Romans, men who had lost all their fortunes gambling or fallen into disgrace, entered the arena. A lot of work went into staging these epic fights. Let's start by having you look from across the railing to the far side. That labyrinth underneath the arena was called the Hypogeum. It's kind of hard to imagine what all those crumbling ruins used to look like. Here, I'll show you. Down there were two levels of cells and cages filled with condemned criminals, trained gladiators, and wild animals as well as theatrical props and scenery. 60 human-powered elevators using ropes, pulleys, and capstans brought them up through trap doors to the arena floor. All right, well, rather than leave this spot, let's stay right here and head back in time to 101 AD. Just look at the label marked 101 AD and say, let's go. Welcome to ancient Rome. Here we are, standing on the floor of the Colosseum. In Roman times, it was called the Flavian Amphitheater. The arena might look empty right now, but the workers are just putting up sets and props before an all-day-long gladiator contest. The Romans love to portray scenes from history, just like an action-adventure movie. Look around, and I'll tell you more about the place. Just like nowadays, tickets are used for seating. They even have concession stands and prizes. You can win a live boar or a gag gift of a box of angry bees. That's a trap door leading to the Hypogeum, the underground place beneath the arena that I told you about earlier. Imagine standing right here and seeing a giant lion. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, by all means, leave comments. Never know. Might actually take action on the comment. So leave it below. And uh, feel free to subscribe because, you know, I'll be producing more stuff. More stuff with HoloLens. In fact, the thing that I just deleted earlier, uh, I'll be doing that. And it's going to be similar to Holo, Holo Tour. So just a little demo I'm working on. So if you want to see that when I'm done, or at least as I'm making progress, make sure you subscribe so you get notified. Or, you know, follow me on my blog. Uh, chadcarter.net or chd.me Cheetor Cheetor 2009 Yeah Cheetor 2009 Cheetor 2009 Cheetor 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 Chitor Jimmy Chinga Tor Cheetor 2009 Years important. Cheetor.